Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the Vesper light. And we implore you of your great mercy as you enfold us with radiance of this light. So you will shine into our hearts the brightness of your Holy Spirit. Grant us, Lord, the lamp of clarity, which never fails, that it may burn in us and shed its light on all those around us, and by its brightness we may have a vision of the holy city where dwells the true and never-failing light. O Lord God Almighty, as you have taught us to call the evening, the morning, and the noonday one day, and have made the sun to know its going down, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that by your brightness we may know you to be the true God and eternal light, living and reigning forever and ever. O oh, our God, we present ourselves before you as we enter this act of devotions. We pray, dear God, that all that is said, all that is done here in this act of devotions, dear Heavenly Father, will bring honor and glory to your holy name. We pray that you will minister to our hearts and speak to us, dear God, that you will reach us at our various points of need. So we just place this entire act of worship into your hands and we pray that your Holy Spirit will enlighten us and that you, dear God, will take charge. Hear this, our prayer. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
Our reading is taken from Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 22 to verse 24. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, the updated edition. Here begins the reading. And now as a captive to the Spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. Here ends our reading. of almost every new year many of us make a declaration which goes something like this new year new me and we start off on very journeys of self-improvement if you're like me that journey may include a pledge to drop some extra pounds some pounds that we may have put on during the festive season as we ate the rich meals, as we indulged in the Christmas foods like ham cutters or ham and hops, as my Trini friends would say, as we drank the sorrel, as we inhaled every single slice of black cake that was placed before us, not to mention the other sweets like chocolate that we ate in the spirit of the season. Come January 1st, many of us flock to gyms. We take up jogging, we take up walking, or some other form of exercise in an attempt to wage war against the belly fat. We all know how easy it is to pack on pounds, but sometimes it takes a little hard work and determination to lose those extra pounds. Throughout all the 5 a.m. runs, the bench presses, the squats, and the leg lifts, we have to trust the process that we are in fact burning fat and dropping a belt size or two. I will be the first to admit that sometimes trusting the process is not always easy. As you are working hard in the gym and as you are dieting, as you give up various 
wonderful treats in the hope that you're going to lose a few pounds. When you get on the scale, sometimes you don't see that number getting smaller and doubt begins to creep in and you want to give up. But as any personal trainer will tell you, that is when you have to dig deep and keep up your resolve and trust the process even more. Just like how we have to trust the process in our weight loss journey, many times in our own faith journey, we have to trust the process as sometimes the result of our prayers, of our Christian discipline and devotion, the seeds of faith that we have planted and our other efforts in the spirit are not as immediately evident as we would like. In our reading today, we see the Apostle Paul announcing that he is going on a journey to Jerusalem. He feels compelled by the Holy Spirit to go. He doesn't know what he will find in Jerusalem. He just knows that God wants him to go. The Apostle Paul understands that persecution and affliction may await him there in Jerusalem. But he trusts God nevertheless that whatever awaits him there is the will of God and that is what he is being called to go to. The Apostle Paul knows that God is working out a greater good in the entire process. And so whatever he may face, it is the will of God. And he just needs to be obedient and go to Jerusalem. He just needs to trust the process. And so as we read on, we see that Paul stepped out in faith. And he went to Jerusalem, not knowing what he would find, but he trusted the process. The Apostle Paul exemplifies what it means for us as modern day Christians to trust God's process. Simply put, trusting God's process means surrendering, surrendering our plans and desires to God and trusting that God's plan for us is better than anything that we can imagine for ourselves. In a way, this surrender is summed up in the covenant prayer that we as Methodists offer yearly. We tell God, you know what, do with us what you will. And we acknowledge that some of the things that God may have planned for us may naturally fit into the things that we like. But there may be other things that God has planned for us that don't really accord with our vision, our dreams, and the goals that we thought that we had. But here it is in our covenant prayer, we're surrendering all to God, and we are trusting the process that God will work through us, and that everything will be done for the glory of God. And even ultimately, that what we will receive could be far better than what we would have dreamed of. You know, Trusting God's process means having faith that even when things don't go according to our plans, God is in control and working all things out for our good. Trusting God's process can be difficult, especially when we face challenges or setbacks that seem to be steering us away from our goals. But here are some practical tips to help us build our trust in God when this happens. We are called when we are trusting God's process and things don't seem to be going to plan to stay rooted in God's word. The Bible is full of stories of people who faced trials and tribulations yet trusted God's plan for their lives. By reading and meditating on scripture, we can gain perspective and strength to face our own challenges. We can also draw comfort from the promises and the truths in the Bible, such as Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope 
and a future. Also, it calls us to practice gratitude. When we focus on what we don't have or what's not going according to plan, it's easy to become anxious or discouraged. But by practicing gratitude, we can shift our perspective and focus on the blessings in our lives. We can thank God for the things he's already done for us and trust that he will continue to provide all our needs. Thirdly, we can seek community and support. We aren't meant to navigate through life alone. By connecting with other Christians and seeking support from our church community, we can find encouragement, accountability, and wisdom. We can also learn from the experiences and testimonies of others. And you know what? One of the interesting things that I love about the current church community I'm a part of is that part of our notices every Sunday, we engage in a process where we invite the congregation to share testimonies. And they tell about how God has been working in their lives throughout the week. And I find that that is one way that really helps to boost me when I feel down. And I'm sure that if you share with other people, they can boost you and encourage you and really show you even when you're in a moment of doubt about God, that God is working behind the scenes for the greater good of all of humanity, for the greater good of you and for the greater good of me. Fourthly, we can be patient and persistent. Trusting God's process doesn't mean that everything will happen overnight. It may require patience and persistence as we wait for God's timing and direction. But by remaining faithful and obedient to God's word, we can trust that God will guide us and lead us to where God wants us to be. Trusting God's process is a lifelong journey, but it is one that is worth taking. As we learn to surrender our plans and desires to God, we can experience God's peace, joy, and fulfillment in our lives. We can trust that God's plans for us are good and that God will never leave us nor forsake us. If we go back to Paul, who went on a journey and trusted God, Paul, we know, would have blessed so many persons along the way, would have brought so many persons to faith, but also would have experienced the love and comfort and presence of God. And we know that as Paul trusted the process, everything was worked out so that Paul now today is revered by the church as being that great apostle to the Gentiles and we who are part of this Gentile world we have faith because of the work and mission that God placed within Paul's heart so as we trust God let us never lose hope let us keep our faith strong and our hearts open and trust in God's process every step of the way. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So let us trust God, knowing that God will work everything out for God's purpose and God's plan. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, 
We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that has reminded us that we need to trust your process as you work everything out. Let us not lean onto our own understanding, but rather let's tap into you, dear Heavenly Father, for you have that great wisdom. Let us trust you. Let us surrender all our plans and desires to you because we know, dear God, that you know so much more than we do, dear God. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just want to trust your process and we lay aside all of ourselves as we dedicate ourselves afresh to you, trusting you as you work everything out for our good. Hear this, our prayer. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and Amen. of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.